is attempting to prove what all the Christians know, that we humans have souls. seriously that your soul was going to be weighed just after you died in fact and the person who was going to weigh it would be St. Michael, he was in charge of this and the less sin there is the heavier your soul will be the whole point is that you are different from another person, your sins or your goodness makes you different and if everybody weighed the same there'd be no point in bothering to weigh your, to weigh your soul at all so what we find here is that a different weight is crucial. You're not going to expect 21 grams every time. With his fourth patient, things don't go so well. Some believe what the doctor is doing is sacrilege. Ah, doctor. I trust you won't be much longer. The hospital staff famously interrupted McDougall's experiment. And it could well be this quite powerful superstitious belief that actually the soul is being endangered rather than measured. And there were very powerful popular superstitions that the soul had to actually get out of the body at one level. It had to get out of the building at another level. So it's not unknown for people in McDougall's lifetime to be opening a hole in a roof, to be opening windows. And that kind of superstition wrecks his poor test. I must protest. You have just ruined the experiment. I'm so sorry. The next step records a loss in weight of three eighths of an ounce. McDougal now has four samples, all of last week. Has he measured his patient's departing souls? Or has he missed something? Like any good scientist, McDougal then had to come up with alternative explanations for the weight that he had discovered um, in order to rule them out. Um, the obvious op um, option, of course, was the urine and the feces released by the, the subject upon death. Um, but he argued that these weights were taken into account because they were on the bed with the patient at the time of death. That's not the only variable. Could it be that he's just measuring the weight of their final breath? He spent some time on the scale himself, breathing out really hard to see if that changed the way the, the scale registered, and it did not. So he accounted for those bits. <laughs> McDougall's death watches don't sit well with the medical staff. Eventually, he's ejected from the home. He's forced to end his research. Excuse me, nurse. I need my... Uncertain how to proceed, McDougall keeps his experiment secret for six years until, in 1907, the New York Times breaks the story. He's forced to publish. When McDougall published his results, people kind of went crazy. Uh, a lot of people questioned his methodologies, but they couldn't really offer any alternatives to account for the 21 grams that were missing. The Carlos consumptive home had been a lucky break for McDougall. No one else would give him a chance to continue his work. With humans, at least. McDougall moves on to a new area of research, 
aiming to prove that not only do we have a soul, but that it is a gift given only to humans. And his results are exactly as he might have expected. He finds that when dogs die in his scale, he records no weight loss. McDougall, I think, found what he wanted and what a lot of Christians would have wanted out of these dog experiments, that when they died, there was no perceptible weight loss. So, no souls and animals. His results perfectly match the fundamental Christian belief that humans have souls, but animals don't. But is the underlying assumption behind his work flawed? Embedded in McDougall's argument and in his experiment is the notion that the soul actually has a weight in the first place. Now, that's an assumption that he makes, which he then confirms with some experiments he does, but there's a really big logical flaw living at the bottom of what he was trying to do. We know of many things that exist but don't actually have mass, photons being the prime example. As my scientific hero, Richard Feynman, would say, the first principle of science is to not fool yourself, and you are the most easy person to fool. McDougall knew the answer he wanted to get, and he got it. What a surprise.